All right. Hey there, guys. I love chatting with you, even though you're not talking back. <laughs> Listen up. I told you last week we would talk about the neutral thought method that I use with my athletes. So this is what it's like, all right? Just really easy. If you hold a belief that you might not do well on a certain skill, and then at the same time you're trying to tell yourself, I am amazing at that skill, because you're trying to convince yourself, right? That's when you have that cognitive dissonance. Maybe we'll have to talk about that sometime. Anyways, you have this cognitive dissonance of, hey, I want this, but then I believe underlying that I'm really not capable. Then you have this tug of war going on. You are attempting to prove two contradictory thoughts uh, that you wanted to both be true at the same time, okay? And how can it be true if you're telling yourself you can't do it and you can do it at the same time? This is typically when we get up um, our, like we give up our desires to believe that we can master any new skills and then we start looking for evidence that we just can't, okay? This is just the way it is. I'm not as good as the other gymnasts. They had a head start. They, were, they started when they were younger. Our brain looks for evidence as to why we just are not gonna be able to do this. Our brain is seeking to create an internal sense of comfort, even at the cost of your goals and your dreams, okay? And it's not doing it, um, it's not trying to do that to you, it's just, it's keeping you safe. If you aren't attempting to achieve new goals, it might be because you wanna avoid feeling uncomfortable or disappointed in the short term. So for most of us, our dreams keep popping up even with that discomfort. So our dreams are like, but wait, you remember me? Remember you were gonna go for this level? Remember you thought it would be cool to actually be a level nine or a level 10? Eventually the short term comfort that we choose to, to turn to in the moment turns into discomfort because we have this longing to go for our dreams, to do something that might be more uncomfortable, but will actually feel more satisfying. So when we think about positive affirmations, if we're not including all those pieces that I talked about the last few weeks, then, and, or if we are including them, um, and we're not getting what we want, then maybe we're trying to jump to believing the affirmation a little too soon, and our mind's not catching up. So what I do is something called a neutral thought method. So first we try to neutralize your thoughts. We find a thought that your brain actually does believe and then you will start creating less cognitive dissonance, less fighting, less discomfort in the brain. And you'll be more likely to transition your old thinking to a new belief system that actually serves you. So for example, if you think, I don't think I can do this skill and that translate into a neutral thought of doing a new skill is a possibility for me, or it's likely that someone like me could learn this new skill, we're gonna start searching, search, oh my goodness, my tongue is tied, searching for um, evidence that that might actually be true. So that kind of takes us a little closer to a neutral ground. It doesn't mean that I can totally do this skill yet, I don't have that belief, but I might have a belief that I can't do the skill, but maybe somebody like me is capable of learning what it takes to get the skill getting to the neutral, be a detective, looking for evidence that you might be able to do that skill after all. And then you start asking your brain questions that help prove new positive thoughts are true. So instead of repeating daily, I'm great at this new skill, I'm great at this new school skill, I've got this, I've got this, you ask yourself, how can I learn this new skill and how can it be fun at the same time? Or what resources do I have that I can use to learn this new skill safely so I can feel safe? And you're not always going to feel safe based on your lower brain, but on your higher brain, your, your prefrontal cortex, it, you can logically realize why most likely you're going to be safe. So then you'll do things when you feel safe. How could someone like me learn to master a skill like this, right? When you ask yourself how you do those things, usually your brain's like, I don't know, but your brain likes to answer questions. So you give your brain a question and it will start finding evidence and finding solutions and problem solving. It's going to go to work to search for evidence and answer your questions. Whether you want the positive or the negative side, it's gonna start looking for it, okay? Then your positive affirm affirmations aren't just those feel good fluffy stuff. They were gonna be, they're gonna be thoughts that are supported by real evidence because your reality is your reality, right? And evidence that you're finding to make it true. So you've gotta be willing, just one other piece, to be wrong. You have to be willing to prove that your old belief system, your old way of thinking could totally be wrong that it might just not be helping you at all, that maybe it's not true at all that you can't do a skill. Maybe it's not true that you have to be scared every time you're learning a new skill. Maybe it's not true that you're not capable of learning new skills because you started later than your friend, right? 
all beliefs are just sentences that we have thought over and over again in our mind. And when you look at your old thoughts as sentences, you can start to see that you have power in what you are thinking because you created that sentence in the first place. You have a choice. So let me tell you a neutral thought. You can use things like, I'm capable. I'm a person who's learning to believe. I'm strong. I've got this. I'm figuring out what works for me. Okay, let me give you a full neutral thought example, neutral thought method going from one to the other. My gymnastics will always be terrible. There's one side of the coin, right? And if we're going to work to my gymnastics is good, you could, cho you could choose little baby steps that you believe, such as my gymnastics will always be terrible, right? There's that side. You could go to my gymnastics isn't great right now, but it could change, right? So that's kind of loosening up a little bit, making it a little bit more believable on the other side. My gymnastics literally has the ability to change. My gymnastics is capable. I am capable of changing my gymnastics and improving daily, right? And then you move to things like, I am improving. And the more I work at gymnastics, the more I'm capable of improving. Or a thought like, my gymnastics can improve as I learn new capabilities. These are all just baby step thoughts trying to get to the other side. So what about if I keep working hard at gymnastics, I might be closer to my goals. And then if I keep working harder at gymnastics, I will be closer to my goals. And then maybe my gymnastics has the ability of being pretty good. And my gymnastics can be pretty good. And my gymnastics will be pretty good. And then you go to my gymnastics is good. I am a good gymnast right? Do you see how those baby steps, they seem insignificant, but that is the magic. Getting yourself to believe one step to the next step makes it so that you can fully 100% believe that you're capable, that you are a good gymnast, that you do have skills that will make it so that you can keep moving forward. So see how those baby steps from, I don't believe I can do the skill to, I totally got this, that you need those steps along the path and they have to be believable in order for it to work. So if you want help creating your believable path, going from doubt to total confidence, go to flippinawesomecoaching.com and schedule an appointment and I will help you. This is what I do. This is the magic. Okay, and have a flippin' awesome day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye guys.